Good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. So uh, we're working on a ditch project today. I think I mentioned it in the uh, tile plow video the other day. So what we're doing is we're debrushing about oh, a mile and a quarter of ditch here. And uh, I need to get to the other side of this ditch with the feller buncher so that I can cut trees on the south side. We're on the north side right now and I need to get across. And the only way to get across is to travel around the end of the ditch, which is a long ways. So I can't go in through the neighbors. I don't want to tear up their field. And I would have to go at least a quarter of a mile to get around the end to get over there that way anyways. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pack me a bunch of brush in the ditch right here. And uh, I'm going to walk the feller buncher across my brush bridge. So I gotta gather up some of these trees over here. These get dug, dug out because they're too high up on the bank and uh, they could potentially uh, get hit by farm equipment. So we'll go ahead and take these out. Anything on the taper I will cut. We just don't want to disturb that bank and cause washouts and things like that. So we'll get us some here gathered up. Now I have done this before. This ditch isn't extremely deep, so it shouldn't take too many trees to get me a bridge across. And then once I'm done cutting on the other side, we'll go ahead and we'll uh, get all these out and uh, we will put them in the brush pile and burn them. But for right now, they're going to act as a bridge. I have to cut some of these to get me some more. I don't know if there will be enough. These are sassafras trees, so they're pretty uh, soft. They break easily. said they break easy they shatter so let me grab this whole bunch of them so once I get across the feller buncher I will cut all them trees on that side and throw them over the ditch and then we'll get them back out. Saves us having to make a, another brush pile on the other side. I guess our winter is coming back. It's supposed to start snowing this afternoon. It was so nice out for the last couple of days in the 50s. But it is February and it's still winter time in Indiana, so we were uh, getting lucky there for a little bit. hasn't froze that hard. 
it got crusty, you know, about six inches on top, but just never really froze any deeper than that. All right, I'm gonna gather up some more trees and then we'll see if we can cross. Well, I should have enough brush there in the ditch that I can cross, so I'm gonna go get the puncher and get across and start cutting.
little bit squishy through here. This is mock. Oh, Not too bad. It's like uh, traveling an excavator across the waterbed. Or a feller buncher across the waterbed. Just kind of, you kind of feel the wave as you go. Well, I got the 220 across the ditch now. I got some stumps over here that I need to dig out because they're quite a ways away from the ditch. And uh, I don't know if they're ever going to farm this again. It doesn't look like they're farming it now, but I don't want to take a chance and leave them. Uh, I wasn't going to just kind of flush cut them, but then again, I was worried about if they ever mow over here, they uh, might catch them with a the mower or get them with the mower blades or something like that. So it's just better to just be safe and get them dug out. That way, you know, a lot of times you think, oh, well, they're, them stumps are up along the ditch, you know, there's none out in the, out in the field out here. Well, sometimes that's not always the uh, the truth. So, it just makes it uh, safer. Or something like that. You know what I mean. A few little twigs growing here. I just came through and I nipped everything off with the buncher. Just so I didn't have to deal with the, the trunk of the tree and the top makes things a little easier but yet yeah, left them high enough I could see them and find them so I did cross the tree bridge with the 220 that went just well get that up there maybe scooter can grab it oops got the thumb in the bank there that's all right so we got to get this brush off and then uh, we are going to clean this ditch and, and a friend of ours, uh, he puts in tile also, he's going to do some tiling out here, some drain tile, but uh, he, he doesn't do any brush work or any ditch work like that, he just owns a tile plow. So we do a lot of the uh, ditch work and brush work for him ahead of his plow. Then that's a whole nother line of equipment that he doesn't have to own. So, in the uh, short tile plow video that I made over the weekend, a couple of viewers asked why some guys don't own tile plows that put tile in anyways. Well, the problem is it's not just the plow that you need. There's a lot of support equipment that goes along with it. You know, you need a good stock of tile fittings. Um, that way, if you slice through another tile line and you got to fix it, or just whatever tiling you're doing yourself, it's always nice to have, you know, T's, Y's, crosses, plugs, caps, um, couplings, tap T's. There's, there's just a whole, a whole catalog of different tile fittings. Uh, plus you have all your risers and you need a place to keep all that stuff. So either a horse trailer or an enclosed trailer like we use. Then you have to have a tile cart. You have to have a laser set up. You have to have either a rubber tire backhoe or a mini excavator or an excavator to dig in with for doing uh, for starting at the ditch or uh, doing connections out in the middle of the field. Um, need trucks and trailers to move all that stuff. So it's not just the tile plow, it is a fleet of equipment in order to put tile in. And that was kind of why we got out of the tiling before was because we done some very, very large tile jobs. And then uh, it went down to just, you know, 1,000 feet here, 1,500 feet there, 2,000 feet there. It got to the point where we were moving so much equipment around and you start charging for that or you try to charge to make it worth your time of going and running a short line and it just got to the point where there wasn't really much money in it 
Well, since then, you know, we've gotten our little EX60, so that's easier to move around to dig in with. Uh, we don't have to haul a 40,000 pound excavator around. Uh, we've got the tile plow now that we can just pull places behind the tractor. We don't have to don't have to trailer it all the time. Our bucket wheel trencher, you had to trailer it everywhere you went. So basically what we've done is now that we're back into the tiling, we've kind of streamlined it so that we don't have to move so much equipment around to do it. Um, but before we were moving a lot of equipment around, you know, we had to have the dozer no matter, no matter where we went because that was a bucket wheel and it, it opened up a trench, you know, where the tile plow it slices through and there's minimal dirt that really needs to be uh, put back over. Uh, you could literally run down the top of it with like a uh, skid steer on tracks or a small dozer and close it back up. There's not a lot of dirt to move. So it's kind of, kind of a streamlined deal now. And we've had a lot of customers that are like, hey, we want you to get back into tiling. We got a lot of tile we want to put in. So it's like, all right. And plus we have a lot of our own that we want to do. And that's a lot of the reason that we bought it was we have a lot of our own pipe that we want to put in. So it just made sense to buy one rather than to hire it out for us because we've got all the support equipment already. We just need the tile plow. And we'll see how it goes. I might adventure into finding another bucket wheel trencher or something like that. So, okay. I don't need to go any farther. There's nothing up on the bank down there that I remember. So I've got all this dug out on this side. I can drag the rest out from the other side. So I'm gonna hop back across, finish it out to the corner down there. Well, we had a good day yesterday. I'm way down there now cutting. We just gotta get this brush cleaned up. This section's uh, debrushed. So I'm gonna get the uh, excavator started, get the loader started, and we'll get back at it. I think we can finish up the brush today. So let's see what we can do. So the first thing I gotta do this morning is I need to get this stump out of the ditch here. Now, I don't typically like to dig stumps out of the ditch banks but this one needs to go because even if I cut it off, I won't be able to dig around it properly to get the uh, ditch clean. So it just needs to go. So I can do this by digging it out and then I can pack the uh, ditch bank back in. And being this is a uh, heavier clay soil, uh, it's not gonna wash like sand would. So it, it'll be okay but typically I don't like to do this in sand ditch banks. But sometimes you just have to, especially if a ditch has went 40 years without uh, any kind of maintenance on it, like this one has. It's been, I talked to the landowner, he said it's been at least 40 years since anything's been done on this ditch. And I believe it, it's pretty hairy. So we have a tile down here we have to be careful about. We don't want to uh, rip it out with the roots of this stump. So as you can see, it's moving a little bit as I work these roots out. Just don't want to damage it. That's why I'm over here breaking the roots. There we go. We're free from the tile. We don't have to worry about it. rolled up out of the ditch now. These are repaired. It's not a super big tree. But it's just one that I couldn't work around. There it is. a little a little heavy but hey that extra weight on the 220 come in handy there all right now we'll be able to dig around this curve real nice get plenty of uh get plenty of grade plenty of fall get 
scooter to clean that up. Okay, so we're only debrushing one side of this section, heading that away. So the brush is going to stay on that side on landowner's request. I would love to debrush both sides, but it's not my property. Drag some of this down. I'll have to uh, dig this with the 200 because I don't have a ditch bucket for the 220 yet. And uh, my seven foot tag ditch bucket will not go on the 220 without some modification. So what I'm gonna do is end up just uh, buying the 220 its own set of buckets. We've talked about that in previous videos. All right, I'm gonna head down that way, get some of the rest of the brush out, and then I'm gonna make my way back to the buncher, finish cutting, and then uh, we'll clean all this up and we'll be ready to dig. I did check into a, a clearing rake for this machine. Uh, 48 inch clearing rake uh, the only trouble is is it's 11 week lead time on it so uh, if I order it I'll have it by next fall well I shouldn't say next fall I'll have it before next next fall so my bucket until then will get me by I'm gonna get different teeth for this bucket and uh, that'll get us by until the rake comes all right, let's go get the rest of this finished up. So I did get that all packed back in. It turned out pretty nice looking at it from over here. That'll work just fine. It'll revegetate over time and things will start growing on it again and it won't go anywhere. Get this stuff out of the slop in this bottomless ditch. pile going again, get some heat, get stuff burning again, get some of these smaller little twiggy things, bush honeysuckles. Alright, I'm going to get this section cleaned up and I'll start cutting again. So I definitely found the spot in this ditch where it's definitely going to benefit from being cleaned. I mean, look at this section through here. There is no water at all. I mean, none. There's a little water down there, but look back here. This is upstream. Look at all the water caught up there. All the way to the end. And they're complaining that they can't get this low swale farmed very well through here because it's wet. Well. There's supposed to be a tile in the end of that ditch right there, and I would assume the tile's working, but the problem is, is the water can't get through here to get away. So by us cleaning this, it's gonna fix their problem. Well, shortly after my last video today, Scooter calls me and says, hey, the loader locked up, almost put me through the windshield, and then he said, start moving again. He said, I get out and I smell something funny. So I go over there and Scooter's distraught walking around the loader, all worried that something bad had happened. Well, something bad did happen, but I don't think it's the end of the world. So we brought it home. We got it to the trailer and brought it home. And uh, what I discovered out in the field was uh, that cover was very hot and smoking. So I run down to our case dealer, our ag dealer, and uh, my buddy Scott, the parts man, is able to look through the parts catalog for heavy equipment on there, and he got me the breakdown of what's behind this cover. So the way I understand it, the shaft that is for forward first gear and reverse second gear is behind this cover, and there's a bearing on the end of it. That bearing's $1,100. That's the only downfall. But I think that bearing failed, and that's all the issue we have here. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that cover off. We're going to see what's going on. I figured I'd take you guys along for the adventure. 
So let's get some tools and get that off and see what kind of carnage we have back there. So the sad part is these old 621s, it's getting hard to get parts for them. So uh, that bearing is available, that cover is available, so we're lucky there. But uh, if we go any deeper, it might be a little bit of a challenge to get parts. So let's see what we got. Okay, so we're taking our bolts off real quick. Let's see what we got here. Got a drain pan under the loader. I don't think there'll be much oil here. May have tap on that probably. Yeah, let me get a hammer. Okay, I got a hammer. There we go. Let's see what we got. Oh, balls are falling out already. Oh man. Yep. Bearing failure, but why? Oh boy. I'll figure out what's going on with that. Try and get close up there. You can grab it, get a little oh, closer up, yeah. show them. Oh, my hand right over the lens, sorry. Yep, definitely a bearing failure. Mm -hmm. Where'd the rest of the rollers go? Probably in the transmission. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna dig a little deeper. Okay. okay, so we got to get this plate off, get this mechanics wire out of here. The wire's there to keep it from uh, the bolts from coming loose. We got those off. Now I think we can take this plate off. Oops. No, nope. maybe. Uh, there we go. That, I don't know if that's a bearing race on the end of there or what that is. Have to look in the uh, papers. Punched it on there again. They aren't very tight. Let's see if I can get that last one out. Break them loose with the impact. There we go. Darn it. There it is. Alright. Get this plate off. What happened? Oh, it's $1,100 bearing. Not quite to the bottom of all of it yet. Get these bolts out and this plate off. This loader's cold from being outside all day. It's like an ice cube. One more bolt to go. I'm hoping this kind of just falls apart. Steaming. Yep. There's that. Now we're going to have to pull that bearing off there. Well, what I've determined is I need to get this bearing race out, this bearing race off. I got the snap ring off, and I'm going to have to come up with a way of pulling this out. I'm probably going to have to weld something to this to pull on it. I've been trying to pry in this groove, and I can move it a little bit, but I just can't get it popped out of there. There is a ball up here in this half moon groove in this casing and that keeps this bearing race from spinning. So uh, it's not in there super tight. So hopefully maybe I can get something, I can get a better grip on it, I can pop it right out of there. So anyways, we're gonna have to uh, make this a to be continued video, uh, cause it's time to go home, I'm tired. Can't get parts for it yet this weekend anyways, so won't be able to get anything until Monday. So I think we're gonna end this episode right here. So I'll uh, be looking forward to uh, part two of this little adventure. So hopefully it's nothing catastrophic. What bothers me is we're missing a lot of the rollers. So that means they're in the transmission case. So I'm hoping maybe they fell straight down in there and they're in the bottom of it. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'd hate to have to pull all this apart.
and it don't look fun to get that transmission out of there. I think it either goes through the top or it goes off the bottom. Probably in this case, we'll have to take it out the top. I know some of the bigger Steiger four-wheel drive tractors, you can dig a hole under them, back them over the hole, drop the transmission in the hole and pull them back up and lift the transmission out of the hole. So looks like this is gonna have to go out the top if it has to come out. So fingers crossed, we don't have to get that deep into it. So we'll see what happens. So anyways, thank you for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll see you all in the next one.